Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at our first custom brawl deck featuring Etrata as our commander. And Etrata the Silencer is a pretty unique commander in that she offers an alternate win condition built in. And uh, in standard it's pretty tricky to make that work, but in commander where you get to replay Etrata from the command zone over and over again, it's actually not that difficult to get the alternate win condition going. So let's uh, read Etrata here, a 4 mana 3-5 Vampire Assassin that cannot be blocked. And when Etrata deals combat damage to a player, we can exile target creatures that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. And that player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. And then we have to shuffle Etrata into a Sooners library. But of course, since we're playing Brawl, instead of having to shuffle Etrata back into our library, we can decide to put her in the command zone instead, where if we replay Etrata, she's going to cost two additional mana for each time she was put there. So the first time we can play Etrata for four mana, the second time six mana, and the third time eight mana. So that does start to add up. So to counteract this increased mana cost, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve. Mainly we're playing a bunch of bound spells, so we can attack with Etrata, let the exile trigger go on the stack, but then before shuffling Etrata back into our library or putting her in the command zone, we can instead just bounce her back to our hand with a card like Unsummon, for example. For one mana we can return target creature to its owner's hand, so we get to bounce Etrata back into our hand, where we get to replay her for four mana instead of having to pay the increased commander cost. So we've got a bunch of these bounce spells, and then looking at the rest of the deck, we are very much focused on the alternate win condition of Etrata, so you won't see many other creatures in the deck. One important creature to point out is Crashing Drawbridge. Two mana for an 0-4 defender can tap to give creatures we control haste until end of turn. So that's a great way for us to attack with Etrata the turn we play her, and we'll definitely speed up our uh, win condition. And then we've got a bunch of counter spells to kind of protect Etrata from removal or just to kind of slow down the opponent while we try and set up. We also have a lot of mana artifacts so we can have extra mana in play to replay Etrata if she goes back to the command zone. So let me quickly go over the entire list. We've got Unsummon as a cheap bounce spell, the rest has some hand disruption. We've got Agro Bolas as a cheap body that can help us block against aggro decks and can find an instant or sorcery from the top three. Drawbridge to speed up our clock. Disdainful Stroke as a counterspell for more expensive cards. Lasso Tap Plating is a nice way to give Etrata Hexproof in response to an opposing removal spell. We've got Negate to counter non-creature removal spells or planeswalkers from the opponent. Quench is another cheap counter. Runaway Together can bounce Etrata and an opposing creature at the same time. Then Tails End is a great counter spell in this format since everyone has access to a legendary spell we can counter, and every now and then we might counter an activated or triggered ability, like one from a Planeswalker for example. We've got the Fairy's Time Twist, which is even better than a bounce spell, since instead of having to bounce Etrata back to her hand and replay her, we can instead, in response to the exile ability from Etrata, just cast the Fairy's Time Twist to essentially flicker Etrata back into play, where we can then attack on the following turn instead of having to spend mana replaying Etrata. Disappearance as another cheap bounce spell. We've got Legion's End as a nice cheap removal spell, especially against the Persistent Petitioner decks. You can uh, get quite a blowout with a Legion's End. Then uh, we've got some more, Drown in the Lock as both a counter spell or removal spell, so it does both quite nicely. Thought Erasure as more hand disruption to take away those key removal spells or planeswalkers from the opponent. We've got a Tyrant Scorn, which is also great as it doubles up as removal or a way to bounce Etrata back to our hand. We've got Arcane Signet, which of course is a mainstay in all these Brawl decks. And then at uh, 3 mana, we've got Dispute as another counter spell, Portal of Sanctuary, another way to bounce Etrata back to our hand. Sabotage is another counterspell, Toll of the Invasion has more discard, Locket, Chromatic Lantern, Banner, Mana Geode and Spinning Wheel, all ways to ramp with a little bit of extra upside. Then at 4 mana we've got Spark Double, which is great in this deck since we get to copy Etrata and ignore the legendary rules, so we can have two Etratas in play at the same time, and that's going to make it much easier to exile three opposing creatures. Then we've got Price of Fame, which is quite good in this format, only costing 2 mana when targeting a legendary creature from the opponent to destroy it and surveil 2. Then we've got Ritual of Soot as a sweeper, especially against those persistent petitioner decks. Then we also have Covetous Urge as a discard spell that lets us cast the card we get rid of. We've got a Fireman's Vessel as another ramp card. We've got the Bond of Revival, sometimes we can decide to let Etrata die if our opponent removes her and go to the graveyard where we can then get her back and give her haste at the same time to maybe exile that last creature to win the game. 
and then also Taste of Death, since we don't play many creatures ourselves, so each player sacrifices three creatures, it's gonna be the opponent sacrifices three creatures for the most part, and we get to make three food tokens to gain some life. And then the mana base, lots of lands, since we can't really afford to miss any land drops. And we don't have a ton of fancy lands with activated abilities, since for the most part we're just going to be replaying Etranta over and over. So 11 islands, a mystic sanctuary to maybe put an instant or sorcery back on top. A couple swamps, and then as many of the dual lands as possible. The mirror guild gate, backwater, watery grave, command tower of course, and then evolving wilds and fabled passage as uh, lands to search up some basics as well. Now a few important rules to point out, uh, tokens don't work with Etrata since those don't stay in exile with a hit counter on them, exiling opposing commanders also doesn't add up towards the three required to get the alternate win, and also if you bounce your Etrata, even though you bounce Etrata back to your hand, you will still have to shuffle your library, so that could come up if you maybe put a card on top with Surveil. So those are small interactions to keep in mind. So it's not easy to get the alternate win with Etrata, but uh, when it works it's pretty glorious. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're up against the Jace Wielder of Mysteries. So this could be a Persistent Petitioner deck, in which case this hand's not particularly great. Against, let's say, your average deck, this hand would be pretty decent, since we have two ways to kind of bounce Etrata, some interaction. But against the Petitioner decks, we need some more specific answers, I think. This is not exactly it. So let's mulligan more aggressively. This hand's also not great. But we do have a Spark Double to copy Etrata, which can maybe be good enough. So I guess we'll try this. And then the gate's probably not going to be very good. Can counter Jace, but doesn't counter Petitioners. So the cards we really wanted to find were uh, Legion's End, Ritual of Soot, maybe some more mana acceleration just to get a trat out there quickly. But I have been able to win this matchup even without those sweepers, just by getting an early trat in play and exiling multiple petitioners, there we go. The rest is not going to be very effective, but I can cast all of the invasion to maybe take away one of them. And yep, there we see all the petitioners. At least next turn I get to play Trata, and we'll have plenty of creatures to exile. And then next turn I can play Spark Double before attacking with Etrata. So we get a second one in play, and then I'll need 6 mana to replay Trata a second time. So... If I hit my land drop, we might be able to outrace the Petitioners, we'll see. I guess it also depends how many more Petitioners they draw. So my only play Spark Double here. I guess I can duress in case they're somehow not playing all Petitioners, but I doubt it. Alright, so just another Petitioner's in hand. Play our Spark Double. Copy Etrata. And get our first assassination in here. Opponent can mill me for 13. Next turn we know they can play another one. So if they don't draw any more Petitioners, we could be okay. But, uh... Most of their deck is Persistent Petitioners, and then on my side I want to draw a land to replay Trata, or some interaction, of course, Legion's End, and Ritual of Soot being the best ones. But even a Taste of Death with 6 mana can be quite effective. So opponent mills for 13, so Taste of Death, gone here. So Tranta's back in our command zone, waiting for one more land to be replayed. So yeah, at the current rate I'm at 36 cards, my opponent can mill me for another 13. Down to 23, draw for turn 22. If I can draw lands next turn, then I think I can outrace them. Alright, there we go, Watery Grave, so... Etrata attacks. Of 
Thanks, all petitioners. I guess my opponent can also mill me for one more here, since they have five petitioners, so four can be tapped and one can be activated. So, they essentially mill me for another 26, plus a bit more with Jace. But that's not enough here, since we drew the land. If I didn't draw the land, then i probably lose this game. Alright, let's see if our opponent has any outs. It's gonna be Jace. Draw cards. Mill me for two. 21 remaining, minus 13. There's still uh, plenty of cards remaining in library. And yeah, against the petitioners you don't run into the problem where the opponent doesn't have any creatures for you to exile since there's plenty. So yeah, I think my opponent's coming to the realization of uh, what's happening. Attack. Just gotta make sure to attack my opponent instead of Jace. Exile petitioners. And my opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're up against an Emery deck, so expect some artifact synergies. What do we think of this hand? The sweepers are good in certain matchups, but I don't think this is the one. So don't love this, we'll take our free mulligan. Is this any better? It is a little bit, so we've got Runaway and Time Twist to kind of flicker and bounce Etrata. No mana ramp, only three lands, but hopefully we can draw a couple more. And then... Uh, yeah, the cover the search should be okay too, so we'll keep. And then I'm probably just playing the Sanctuary turn one. Ooh, Mystical Dispute, so yeah, definitely want to keep up Dispute as early as possible. Can't actually keep it up now, so won't be able to counter Emery, which is unfortunate. So there's definitely downsides to playing some of these fancy new lands that come into play tapped. Otherwise, Dispute would have been able to counter Emery. Alright, let's just play the Passage. And then I'll be able to Dispute a blue spell. And then hopefully we'll draw land at some point. So, Ginger Brute's back from the graveyard. Submersible can also be replayed, thanks to Emery. I guess it's probably a good habit to fetch with your Fabled Passage in your own turn to play around an opposing Tails End, countering the ability. But we did have a Mystical Dispute up, just in case. Alright, Mana Geode is good. Try to find more lands here. Price of Fame's okay, but I'm not too upset if Emery sticks around. And I would rather just hit my land drops. Right, Clockwork Servant, draw a card. And I get to equip the Mantle of Tides. So, plenty of creatures for me to try and take out with Etrata, and my opponent's deck shouldn't have a ton of interaction, so that's good. I'm gonna let uh, Witching Well resolve, don't think I need to dispute that. Keeps two cards on top. Also, if I dispute the Witching Well, they can always just get it back with Emery. Of course, now they can sacrifice it and get it back, but so be it. I think I'm kind of tempted to just run out of Trat. I could cover the Surge to take a look at their hand first. But they did keep two cards on top, which I wouldn't be able to take. So I think the plan is just uh, play Trata. Hope that my opponent can get rid of her. And the next turn I might be able to Spark Double and copy a Trata as well. A mono blue deck is not going to have a ton of removal. But you never know. 
We see Ugin in the graveyard. That could have been an answer. And, uh, yeah, Amory is definitely a powerful commander. The fact that you can basically cheat on the commander cost even after having to pay extra mana. Just thanks to Amory's cost reduction is great. So I've got a few options. I could go for the Spark Double, make another Etrata, attack with the original, but then that kind of doesn't work out all that well with my Time Twist. So I think I would rather just Time Twist this turn, which means I can even play my Demir Locket first to develop my mana. So let's attack. And then... Looks like my opponent has an unsummon. Hmm, that's annoying. So now, if I were to time twist, of course, I don't get my attack in. And if I dispute, then Etrata will go to the commander zone, where I have to replay for six mana, which I don't have land six lined up. So that could slow me down. Also gotta remember Vial of Dragonfire, my opponent can sacrifice it, get it back and replay it, and deal a total four damage, but I guess it's still not enough to kill Etrata. So I think at the end of the day, I'm probably just going to dispute this. And then get rid of the Clockwork Servants instead of Emery. And let my opponent keep Emery plus Witching Well. And get rid of the biggest threat on the opposing side. And then hopefully I'll draw land next turn so I can replay Trata. And then I can Spark Double or Time Twist to get the third hit. So the Submersible is going to get crude. Amory attacks as well, so my opponent is off the Witching Well plan. Ooh, God Pharaoh statue. Well, that's a very big issue. Now my Etrata costs two more. In addition. So that's pretty punishing for the decision we took. Otherwise, the time twist would have worked out much better. Well, I guess I can play my vessel to kind of build up my mana. So I'll be able to play Etrata next turn, hopefully. I'm not taking a ton of damage, so I should have the time to kind of set this up. So I can play Trata for 8, and then can set up the Spark Double play. So take 3. Scalding Cauldron, now... That is potentially an issue, since now my opponent has both Cauldron and Vial of Dragonfire, so they can use both to kill Etrata, and they can also just activate Cauldron, get it back with Emery, and sacrifice it again to take out Etrata, so did not want to see that. Yeah, I mean, I just can't afford to run out Etrata right now. So I guess cover the Surge it is. Suppose I could let them kill Etrata and then use Bond of Revival to get her back. Huh, maybe that was actually the play. Have my opponents kill Etrata. And then use Bonds plus Time Twist, but I guess that's still too much mana to do both in the same turn. As it turns out, my opponent had a Counterspell, so playing Cover the Search kind of worked out. But I'm probably going to be dead before I get to do what I want to be doing. Yeah, that uh, Godfarer statue messed us up pretty good. So maybe casting Cover the Surge at the first opportunity would have been the play. Just to try and take away a card like that. And it would have gotten exiled, so it wouldn't have gone to the opponent's graveyard for them to get back with Emery. So they won't be able to end of turn, kill my Etrata, 
but they can just untap and do it, and they have lethal damage in play. So yeah, I don't really see a way out. Good game's opponent. Alright, we're up against niv at Parun. So it's going to be a spell-heavy deck. And what about this opening hand? Yeah, could be better, but uh, I guess I'll keep. So one issue potentially is that our opponent might not have a ton of creatures for us to exile with Etrata. So matchups where the opponent just has a pile of counter spells or planeswalkers, those are kind of the tricky matchups. Signet was a nice pickup. So next turn I could already be playing Etrata if I wanted to. I think I will. There's not too many 2-mana answers for Etrata. Of course there's a couple. There's Daneful Stroke, Quench, Tails End, Essence Capture. But uh, there's fewer 2-mana counterspells than 3-mana counterspells. Alright, Brazen Borrower to put her back into her hands. Fair enough. Just a tap land. So I can just try to replay Trata here. But yeah, same argument as last time. And play the Demir Guild Gate. So hopefully opponent presents a creature for us to exile. Otherwise we can just deal 3 damage over and over, of course. And then we're hoping to pick up some counter spells to protect Etranta. Sahili, now tokens don't count when it comes to Etranta, so we do actually need to exile real cards. We can of course exile the token, but it's not gonna count towards Etranta's uh, win condition. So I guess we'll just attack Sahili here. And then I can play Vessel and keep up Tails End. Could counter the Fabled Passage here with Tails End to basically Stone Rain my opponent, but I think we might be better off uh, saving it. Alright, shot going face to make a servo with Sahili. That's okay. Now of course niv is uncounterable, so one of the situations where Tails End might not be at its best, but of course we're happy for point plays Niv into our Etrata, so that's probably not happening. Alright, Thought Erasure is great. So let's start there. It's going to be Mission Briefing, make a servo, put Hypnotic Sprite in the graveyard, and target Shock. And her hand has Flame Sweep into the story, Magic Mirror. Well, I guess we'll get rid of the into the story here. Flame Sweep should not be too effective. And Covetous Urge seems pretty decent. So we'll take out Sahili. Opponent makes one last servo. And then I could hold the Mana Geodes for next turn since I don't really get much value from the Scry now if I play it. And I don't think I need the extra mana. So yeah, let's hold it for a turn. So your opponent can flash in the Brazen Borrower if they want to. So right now Covetous Urge could steal my opponent's mirror, or I could just get a card from their graveyard as well. But getting the mirror seems decent since I'll have the mana to cast it. 
But it's pretty important for me to keep Etrata in play, so my opponent never gets a chance to untap with uh, niv -Mizzet, basically. Now, I definitely don't want to be attacking with Etrata, since I would be forced to exile the servo token since the ability is not a May, and then the token also doesn't count towards the three exiled creatures, since it's a token that uh, can't be put in exile with a hit counter on it. So we'll just hang back, play my mana geode. And Portal seems decent, lets me replay Trata from hand instead of having to play her from no command zone. There's a Brazen Borrower. So Etranta's holding off the servers on the ground. The Borrower can hit me for three, but then I can get rid of it and replay Trata. So let's see if this resolves first. It does. So let's go to town. And I'm gonna go full control here, just so I don't mess up. So Trata hits, and then with the trigger on the stack, select our targets, and then activate portal, and Trata back to hands. And then we can replay Trata right away. So that she's ready to maybe assassinate Niv Mizzet. Still have our Tails End at the ready. And there's Niv. That works, can be countered. Alright, let's go after Niv. And yeah, my opponent packs it in, they don't have a great answer to Etrata. On to the next one. Alright, we're up against a Chul lane deck, so there should be plenty of creatures for us to exile. And what about this hand? Well, with one more land it's pretty good. So I guess we'll keep. Perfect. So turn 3 banner, turn 4 could already play a Trata or we could wait. Huh, I guess Legion's End is quite useful. Both exiling the Druids, giving me a bit of info about the opponent's hand are both useful. But I could also just go for the Covetous Urge. And probably name... I guess black. We do have more blue creatures and black creatures in the deck, but right now I just need more black mana. Ooh, Smothering Scythe. Alright, it's gonna be pretty annoying. Um, I'll decline. So, yeah, I think I want to cover the Surge, kind of check for a removal spell. Time Wipe and Runaway are both potentially problematic. I guess I'll take the time wipe here. And then we'll just fetch up the swamp. Bones just gonna empty their hands. They can have all the mana they want. And I'll just play a Trata here. And if they want to bounce her, so be it. Definitely back to hands instead of the command zone. And then time wipe is also just good insurance to have. If my opponent goes off. So I could time wipe right now if I wanted to, 
because if I don't, then my opponent can use Chulain to bounce whichever creature I try to exile with the Trata, and then we would never make any progress. So yeah, let's swipe the board. And then next turn I could pay the Tithe Tax, play Bridge, and still have the Zdainful Stroke up. Now Fibblethip is only when it becomes targeted by a spell that it gets shuffled, so I will be able to exile it with a Trata. So I'll pay the two. And then play the Drawbridge. And keep up Disdainful Stroke. Right, never mind, Hypnotic Sprite to counter it, that's annoying. Okay. It's gonna slow us down a bit. Looming Shaman, that's fine. They're gonna shuffle a bunch of cards back into their library. And do I want to pay the tax? My opponent could have played uh, Chulain last turn if they wanted to. I think I'm just gonna play Trata, keep up stroke here. Probably should tap the banner in case they somehow mess with my banner. And then next turn I could spark double Etrata before attacking. And Gilded Goose is acceptable. And Deputy is uh, less acceptable, so I guess... I can't price of fame it for two mana. I can run away together. Or I can just price of fame next turn. I guess that's still fine. Put it in exile. The price of fame is only two mana when targeting Fibblethip, but four mana when targeting Deputy. Alright, so do I want to pay the two? If I pay the two, I can still Price of Fame. But then I can Price of Fame and Disdainful Stroke, so I guess I'll let them have two mana here. Fetch up an island. And pass a turn. One mana short of casting Price of Fame main phase and casting Spark Double afterwards. And I'm probably okay taking one from the Deputy and then casting the Price of Fame end of turn. Just in case I have more Sorcery Speed removal for Etrata. Still not under too much pressure. There's Chulain, which we can Disdainful Stroke. And a Return to Nature on my banner. That's fine. I guess now that they're tapped out, I'm okay just casting the Price of Fame here. And probably don't need all these lands, since I have Spark Double and Runaway to do everything I want. So Chulain gets countered, my opponent has three creatures in play for me to exile with Etrata. And next turn I can Spark Double Etrata and to run away to put Etrata back to my hand. So don't have the mana to pay for Tithe. I guess if I run away I need to bounce one of my opponent's creatures as well. So maybe I'm better off just Paying the 6 mana to replay Trata here. Yeah, I guess I can buy that. 
Otherwise they might decline to replay creature and then things could get messy. And probably exile the goose. Back to the command zone, I get to play Augur. Which misses. Augur's definitely a questionable inclusion in the deck. Thought about just cutting it for an extra land or an extra 3 mana counter. So, yeah, we should have everything lined up here. Still at 20 life. Plenty of targets for Etrata. Opponent doesn't seem to have much interaction. So I'm going to decline. Hit for 4. Exile the sprites. And replay Trata. Alright, so my opponent has one turn to draw their way out of it. Alright, looks like we got there. Replace Chulane, so here we just gotta make sure not to exile Chulane. And instead exile another creature. And then we should have the game locked up. Haha, <laughs> unsummon. Well, I guess I should have uh, maybe paid for the tax here. That was unexpected. Um, Alright, I guess that's fine. I'll just replay her from hand. From uh, my opponent's perspective, it's a bit of a, a risky play here to play Chulain and not be able to play and summon if I did pay the tax. But yeah, I should have definitely just paid a tax there. So, do I want to bounce Chulain? I guess I'd rather just keep up a bounce spell to maybe save a Trata. Even though that means they might go off with Chulain. But yeah, my opponent gave me the GG, so I thought they were uh, done for it, but apparently they tricked me. Brazen Borwer to bounce a Trata, and Brazen Borwer is pretty problematic with Chulain if they get to keep looping those. I guess they don't have double blue to play the Brazen Borrower now. So, sure. Back to hands. So I might need to bounce Chulain at some point so they can keep chaining together Borrowers and uh, keep bouncing my Atrata. Chulain picks up Fibblethip. I guess Chulain could eventually rescue all their creatures, but they're just gonna replay it. Sure. Yeah, I guess I'm maybe better off just bouncing Chulain right now. Prevent any more shenanigans. And Quench probably doesn't do a whole lot. Alright, so let's see, should I pay the two? I guess now I can. Since then I still get to play Trata and keep up Runaway. And now hopefully they're out of answers. Because yeah, otherwise Chulain could have uh, kept bouncing back Brazen Borrower, which then can keep bouncing my Trata. But they were a bit restricted on blue mana, they only had double blue. Point X with both, just gotta make sure not to kill both creatures. I could block one of them, I think I'm okay taking four. In case they have a way of bouncing their own creature, who knows. Drawn from dreams to dig for an answer. Alright, well they get to dig pretty deep, but they don't have any blue mana, so it's gotta be and answering green-white, there's not too many of those. Or I guess they could fetch up a blue land and an interactive spell for one blue mana. But I still have a runaway together to potentially interact. All 
All right, there's a blue lance, and that they find it opt. Well, opponent can maybe find something like a conclave tribunal. All right, well, despite getting tricked and uh, not paying the tax there, we were still able to overcome the two lane deck. But yeah, any of these creature-heavy decks are pretty good matchups. It's mostly the Planeswalker-heavy control decks that are very difficult for Etrata since they just don't have enough creatures for you to exile, and getting there with damage is uh, very unlikely. All right, sweet, so we got some nice games in with our Etrata Brawl deck. Let me know in the comments if there's any commander you would like to see in a future Brawl video. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.